watching over me. Amen? Amen? We give God praise and thanksgiving on this day. We thank the Lord for watching over us last night. Amen? As we slept, Amen. we thank the Lord for allowing us to arrive here safely. We thank God for those who are watching online. Amen? Amen. Let me welcome you to our 10 o'clock worship service here at Lee Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church. Uh, we do not take it for granted that you might have other options when it comes to your in-person and also your online worship experience which is why we always want to pause and say thank you for joining us and helping us lift the name of Jesus higher. Amen? Amen. Amen. As we come on this wonderful uh, 14th day of August to celebrate what God has done in our lives, let us praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Our call to worship this morning, come bless the Lord in whom we find our refuge and strength. You are our God, all the things come to the Come bless the Lord who gives us a rich inheritance and surrounds us with abundance. You are our God, our lives are in your hands. Come bless the Lord who guides us on the path to eternal life whose presence strengthens and sustains us. You are our God, and we will not be shaken. Come and let us bless the Lord, our God. We are going to worship the Lord, our God. Amen and amen. 
Amen. Opening hymn this morning is hymn number 525. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Without further lining, let us sing opening hymn number 525.
give God praise and thanksgiving this morning that we have an everlasting arm to lean on. Amen? Amen. We thank the Lord that he is there for us in all times of our lives. Amen? Anybody had to lean on God? Glad that he was there. Glad that his everlasting arm was there to support you. Amen. We thank the Lord this morning for his blessedness. Let us be led in prayer this morning by Sister Bridget Clark. to not just be careless and know that it's not nothing of our own doing, but because of your love for us. You created us to be in your image. And while we fail many, 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 many times, you continue to love us in spite of all, in spite of ourselves. And you know that is Know though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, yes, your rod and your staff will comfort us. You prepare a table for us in the presence of our enemies, and we know that all will be well. Help us to make good decisions this week, Father. And even though we live in a fallen world full of deception and lies, we know that we have your word, we have the scripture that we. here is not feeling well. Somebody may come here crying this day, Lord, and someone is here full of joy. We ask 
ask that whatever lies before us this week, we know that you have already gone and ahead and you know what's coming. We ask that we be obedient, Lord, and walk in faith. We thank you for your blessings. We ask blessings upon this entire world. That peace will come. Justice will prevail. And love will top everything. Yep, for in everything we do, our hearts, our minds, and our souls to stay in touch with you, to stay in communication with you, and to allow you to be our all in all. Lord, bless our pastor, Reverend Love. Bless his wife, Lady Leah Love. Bless Reverend Love that he will bring a word today that will lift our spirit and bring us closer to you. We trust that you are all inside of him, but we ask that you surround him too. Surround our children as they go back to school. Surround our babies as they go to new babysitters. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. Bless our elders. Some of them may be lonely. They're lonely, Lord. always know how to take care of themselves like they used to. We ask you to be a force in their lives. That when they may not have bread on the table, you will be their food. When they may not have anything to drink, you will have them thirst no more. We bless those
God for the reminder uh, that Jesus indeed will walk with us. Amen? And thank God for all those moments in our lives when God has indeed walked with us. He has comforted us. He has inspired us. Amen? He has cheered us on and let us know that we can indeed make it through whatever it is that we are enduring. Amen? Amen. We praise God again for our male choir leading us in that song. Our Old Testament and New Testament scripture readings are coming from Isaiah chapter 5 verses 1 through 7 and Luke chapter 12 verses 49 through 56. Uh, Isaiah chapter 5 verses 1 through 7. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version and I invite you to follow along. In Isaiah chapter 5 verses 1 through 7, let us hear the word of the Lord. Let me sing for my beloved, my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a vine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste, it shall not be pruned or hold, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed righteousness, but heard a cry. We thank God for a reminder that we are his vineyard, uh, that he has done so much uh, to plant around us and to encourage our growth, and that our proper response should be to yield the right kind of fruit. Amen? Amen. Not wild grapes. Amen. Amen. New Testament scripture comes from Luke chapter 12, verses 49 through 56. Luke chapter 12, verses 49 to 56. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version still, starting with verse number 49. And I ask that you would follow along with us there. I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? Amen. We again thank God for a reminder that uh, his word uh, is indeed true, and we can draw near to that for strength. Amen? Amen? Amen. From all that dwells below the skies, let the Creator's praise arise.
Summer of the Decalogue, uh, Christ's response when he was asked, what is the greatest commandment? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Glory be to the Father. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Let's remain standing as we reaffirm our faith by repeating the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit it on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Uh, you may be seated. We have been blessed uh, so far with our male choir inspiring us and I would invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for a wonderful selection from our male choir, after which we will have our sermon for today.
us of that reality of God in our lives. Amen? Amen. It's good to know that God is real in difficult times in your life. It's good to know that God is real even when time's up. Amen? Uh, Because we want to make sure that we are confident in how we got to where we are when we are successful. Amen? Amen? That we never think that it is of our own doing. Amen? 
Let me direct your attention to Hebrews chapter number 12, verses 1 through 4. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. When you get there, let you say amen. amen. If you're not there yet, say hold on. All right. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. Again, reading it from the New Revised Standard Version. Let us hear God's word. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary in your souls or lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Let us pray. Amen. Gracious God, we come again uh, thanking you for how you have blessed us, how you have strengthened us, God, how you have encouraged us and comforted us, God, how you have blessed us, God, so immensely. We thank you for that, Lord. We come now, God, because we need a word from you. God, somebody needs to be reminded of your love, Lord. Somebody needs to be reminded of your comfort, God. Somebody needs to be inspired, God. Someone needs, Lord, to be enveloped in your love. And so we ask, God, you send your word that it may encourage us. Send your word, God, that it may inspire us. Send your word, God, that it may give us direction for our lives. So, God, as I pray in your son, Jesus, the Christ's name, amen. For a few moments, I want to look at Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 4, and focus on this theme for today, doing life the faith way. Doing life the faith way, F-A-I-T-H, doing life the faith way. Not too long ago in one of my sermons, I told you that we have to change our perception about life as it relates to things that occur in our life. We have to stop thinking that things happen to us and that life happens to us and instead start to embrace the perspective that we happen to life. Uh, some of the examples I gave were about the fact that when you have a job that ends and another one starts, that is not life happening to you, but you're being blessed to go happen to that new location. All right. That perhaps when you move to another city, you're not being pushed out of one city, but God is directing to another city because that's what he did with Abraham. He had Abraham to go happen to another place. God sent Joseph, though his brother sold him into slavery, God allowed Joseph to go through that because God needed Joseph to be in Egypt to interpret Pharaoh's dreams. Life wasn't happening to Joseph. Joseph was happening to life. And when we think about it that way, we have a better understanding of the fact that we were born into a specific moment in time that God had preordained and we were born with specific gifts. We didn't just happen to be born when we were. We were born at a specific time. We didn't surprise the Lord. God knew exactly when we would come into this world. We may have surprised everybody else. But God knew exactly when he had preordained for us to come into this world. More than that, we have all been given a destiny to live out. And how we do that depends on our faith. 
how we live out our and pursue our destiny depends on our faith. We can either do life the faith way or the other way. All right. uh, the other way does not lead to peace and love and joy and happiness and all the gifts of the Spirit. And Paul knew this, which is why he gave us this passage of Scripture to help us do life the faith way. Uh, three points I'm going to lift up to help us do life the faith way. The first point is remove the extra weight. Amen. Remove the extra weight. Verse 1, Paul says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance. Paul oftentimes uses an athletic imagery in order to get his message across, because you have to keep in mind that the society in which he lived, uh, they had a lot of persons who were engaging in these type of activities. They were running races, and so Paul also used that imagery to connect with people, and it still is applicable today because when we think about the imagery that Paul uses, we can better see what God is talking about. Paul uses words like running the race, finishing your course, obtaining your crown. He uses these words and these phrases so we can better understand and we can see what he is talking about. It is out of this imagery that Paul evokes in our minds a better way to perceive living. In our text, Paul makes it clear that we have weighty things in our life. Weighty things that keep us from being the best that we can be. I can't expect to... Uh, race my nephew uh, Samuel or Kendall or Matthew or DeGreer, uh, certainly not Christopher or Azir, I can't race him and expect to win if I got weight on my body. Now, there was a time when I may have been able to race all of them and win, but I need help these days. I, I'm not as fast as I used to be. But there's no sense in me hindering myself even more by putting extra weight around my ankles and extra weight around my arms and weighing myself down. I can't expect to win if I run a race with weight on my body. I do myself no favor if I put these weights on myself and try to run a competitive race. Notice that Paul talks about this. The weighty things in our life. Notice that he also separates the weight from sin. Paul says that sin clings close to us. Uh, the New International Version describes the weights as something that hinders us and sin as something that entangles us. In other words, there are things in our lives that are not necessarily sinful, but they are weighty. I'm going to leave that right there for a minute. There are things in our life that are not sinful, but they are weighty. Well, why is it important? Because, you know, we have a tendency uh, to go and ask the Lord, is it a sin? All right, fix it up. I mean, it's, it's what I'm about to do a sin. I mean, I just want to be clear about, about you know, which, which, which sin this is. Notice even our Decalogue, right, talks about, and the summary talks about a man who asked Jesus, which command is the greatest one? Because I want to know that if I obey that one, I'm good. Which one must I really uh, uh, you know, adhere to, God? And God said, listen, if you've got to do these things, you've got to first love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your, your brother and sister the same way. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. All the law and the prophets. The book of the law and every word that the prophets wrote depend upon you loving your neighbor as yourself. And so the same way with God. All sin is bad, and more than that, weighty things are just as bad. It may not be sinful, but it's weighty because it keeps you and I from being the very best that we can be. Yes, we like to check off the box. If it's not a sin, then I can go ahead and do it. But we know in our hearts and minds it still is not right. And so what Paul says is we got to consider things that are sinful, but more than also things that are weighty because we have some weighty things in our lives. Paul knows the importance of losing the weight because he has seen how new Christians 
can't let go of their past and it's waiting. They can't allow themselves to move beyond what they did. They can't allow themselves to now move into their new life. And more than that, we sometimes remind them of their past. Amen, somebody. Amen. We make things waiting for them because we remind them of what they used to do. We remind them of where they used to go. We remind them of who they used to be. And we put extra weight on them also. So what Paul says is we can not run the race if we have weight on us. Paul also had seen new Christians who got a bit too free with their newfound freedom. And they said, well, Jesus paid it all, didn't he? All to him I owe. All right, all right. Uh, Jesus is going to wash away my sins. Yes, but that's not a license to go and do what you want to do knowing it's wrong. You and I can't go out here and abuse God's grace. We can't go out of here and abuse God's forgiveness. We cannot go out here and grieve the Holy Spirit. We cannot go out here and do these things just because we know that Jesus died for our sins. That also is a weighty thing because there were people who believed that I can just live my life the way I want to live because God is going to forgive me, isn't he? Yeah, that's, that's weighty. It's not a sin, but it's weighty to think like that. The image of a runner we understand so that we can see clearly in our minds. Runners don't have on a suit or a dress if you watch the Olympics or watch any kind of race. You go to collegiate events or high school events. Runners don't have on suits or dresses. They don't wear robes or a pair of pants. No, they take these things off because they might cling to them too tight. They might get in their way as they're trying to move their arms. They remove those things that can hinder them from running their best race. Indeed, we can all identify with that because we have seen the difference in a runner who is free to run versus a runner who has all these things tying them up. I can run as fast as I want to if I have on the right shoes. I can't run as fast in dress shoes as I can in sneakers. You can't run as fast in heels or pumps as you can in sneakers because that's not what you need to run. Those things will hold you back. So the question is for us today, what is it in my life that I need to leave behind? What things do I have on me that are weighing me down? What thoughts do I have running through my mind that are weighty? What activities do I involve myself in that are hindering me from being the best that I can be? What words do I say to people? What conversations do I have? Who is in my circle that I'm allowing in to influence me that is causing me not to be the very best that I can be? Why am I never finishing my race the right way? Who is keeping me from being first place in my race? Who is it that I'm allowing in my circle that is causing me to run behind all the time? What is it in my life that I need to let go? What things do I need to take off so I can run the race that God has given me the right way? You can't let everybody in your circle. You can't have everyone in your ear. You can't have everybody giving you advice. And you can't let everyone give you a model of what is acceptable to do. We do that a lot. I saw Cameron do it, so it must be all right. I mean, it's... If he did it, why can't I do it? Just because he did it and God hasn't called him yet doesn't mean it's right. And so Paul says we have to model our lives after Jesus. That's the second point. Second point. Look to Jesus for inspiration. Look to Jesus for inspiration. Verse 2 says, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Paul says we need to look to Jesus for inspiration. By that, Paul is reminding us that we are enduring some things that Jesus has endured and overcame. Paul wants us to look to Jesus and be inspired because when we look at him, we see how his obedience helped him turn out the right way. Sometimes it's hard to do a thing if you have never seen someone else do it. 
We talk about letting kids see that someone else has done it so they can see it also. Parents, you, you teach your kids how to tie their shoes by first letting them see you tie the shoe. You, you teach them how to clean up by seeing you clean up. You teach them how to do good things by watching you. That's why we also encourage that we should have uh, our children see that someone else has done it. That's why you have career day at school. So they bring folks in and say, listen, you see that person right there? You see that doctor? You see that teacher? You see that scientist? You can be that also because when they see it, they know they can do it. When they see it, they can believe that they can achieve it also because they now think that if I can see someone who looks like me doing it also, that means I can do it, which means I now have the inspiration to go out and do it. I don't think it's impossible because I've seen someone else who looks like me do it. Amen. Amen. We need to see that Jesus overcame so we can be inspired that we too can overcome it. We need to know that Jesus didn't just give up his life for us to give up in life, but Jesus lived by faith so that we could see the power in faith that guided his life. Don't let your current situation make you think it's too late to turn your situation around. But what the devil oftentimes does is says, listen, Ain't no sense you're trying to do right right now. You've been doing wrong so long. Just keep on doing wrong. He convinces people that there's no hope for them. He tries to convince folks that there's no reason for them to turn around. But let me just pause here for a moment and remind you about Paul, whose name was Saul. Saul was a man who was going through and killing Christians. Saul was a man who was holding the people's coats as they were stoning Stephen. Paul was on his way to Damascus. He was actively engaged, don't miss this, in doing the wrong thing. Paul was engaged in doing the wrong thing. He had already been doing the wrong thing and was still doing the wrong thing and was on his way to do the wrong thing. And then Jesus stopped him right there and said, even though you have been doing the wrong thing, even though you are now doing the wrong thing, even though you're going to do the wrong thing, it's still not too late for you. I'm stopping by today to let you know it's not too late for you. No matter where you are in your life, no matter what you have been doing, no matter what you are doing, no matter what you've been thinking about doing, God says you can still have your Damascus Road experience. You can still see the light shining down from heaven. You can still turn your life around. You can still allow the Lord to move in your life in such a manner that you look to Jesus for your inspiration, the perfecter of your faith. Yes. It's not too late. And yes, some folks are saying, but yeah, I'm, I'm functioning okay. I'm, I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm making it. With, with, I'm, making it. I, I'm all right. I, I, I've, I've got enough going on. I don't need to try to change my life right now. But you have to ask yourself this question. Could I be doing better? Could I be doing better? Could I have more joy? Could I have more peace? Could I have more love? Can my family have more joy? Can my family have more peace? Can my family have more love? Can my friends have more love because of how I'm living my life? Can my friends have more peace because of how I'm living my life? Can my friends have more joy because I'm how I'm living my life? These are the questions we have to ask ourselves. Can I be better? Yes. If you take the weight off. Can I be better? Yes. If you let go of some stuff. Can I be better? Yes. If you let go of some stuff that's been holding you back, you can be better. I can be better. The final point. Find the joy in doing what's right. Find the joy in doing what is right. Paul wants us to understand that there is joy in doing what is right. Verse 3 says this, Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners so that you may not grow weary in your souls or lose heart. There is joy in doing what is right. Paul admitted that there were times when he did what he knew was wrong and seemed unable to stop himself from doing it. 
He also tells us that there is great joy and great gain in godly contentment. Now, contrary to popular belief, contentment is not the same thing as settling. Contentment is not the same thing as settling. So often we're made to think that when we are content, then we have settled for less than what we could have, but that's not true. Contentment is being mature enough to enjoy what you have and see the value that it brings to your life while you also see the hand of God that got you to where you are. Let me say that again. Contentment is being mature enough to enjoy what you have. All right. See the value it brings in your life while you also see the hand of God that got you where you are. Settling is when you give up on having what God wants you to have and lower the expectation that you have for God to bless you. If you're not careful, and I'm not careful, we can have the best that God has for us and get tricked by Satan into believing that it's not the best, that we can have more. That's how we got Adam and Eve. Notice the conversation that he has with Adam and Eve. Did God tell you you couldn't eat of that tree? Well, yeah. He said we can eat all these other trees but that one. You mean God is keeping one tree from you? Man, that's not right. You mean he gave you all the other trees in the whole world but don't want you to have this one? They fell for it. Yeah, that's, that's not right. We should have all the trees and that one. Not realizing that as they pursued that one, they would sacrifice what they already had. Not being content with everything but that one. They lost what they could have had. But we find life doing that to us sometimes also. We can have everything we should have and everything that God has given us and still Satan comes in and said, you need one more. You need a little bit more. And we find ourselves falling for the trick, falling for the lie. But we have to understand there is joy in doing the right thing. We can do life the faith way and find joy in doing the right thing. That's what Joseph did when he was sold into slavery by his brothers. He had the chance to exact revenge on them. He was, at that point, the most powerful man in Egypt. But Joseph realized that God allowed something in his life that allowed him to bless him in spite of what his brothers were doing in his life. That's what Joseph did. He took the right path. Joshua did the same thing. When Joshua found the people of Israel not wanting to do the right thing, Joshua said, listen, I'm going to tell you what right now. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I don't know what you're going to do, but we are going to serve the Lord. And you have to ask this question. You can look at Paul's situation and ask yourself, how did Paul overcome all of his situations? Paul realized that there was a great joy to be found in doing the right thing. How does Paul inspire us? How does Paul encourage us to do the right thing? It starts with the first verse. Since we have this great cloud of witnesses, then let us go ahead and live by faith. What are those witnesses? Some of you got some aunts and some uncles up in heaven cheering you on. You got some mothers and some fathers up in heaven cheering you on. You got some brothers and sisters up in heaven cheering you on. You got some nieces and some nephews and some children cheering you on. You got some co-workers up in heaven cheering you on. You got a great cloud of witnesses trying to cheer you on and say, hold on just a little while longer. Keep doing what is right. You got some heavenly hosts encouraging you every day to keep on doing the right thing, to resist temptation, to keep your eyes on the prize and not give up. 
We got a great cloud of witnesses. God himself is leaning over heaven is balcony saying to us, keep on keeping the faith. Resist temptation. Don't give in. And I promise you, you will finish your race. You will obtain the crown of life. I'm so glad that we got a great cloud of witnesses encouraging us to keep on keeping on. I'm so glad that my parents are cheering me on. I'm so glad my grandparents are cheering me on. I'm so glad my aunts are cheering me on. I'm so glad I got folks cheering me on, encouraging me. You ought to be glad. Anybody glad you got a great cloud of witnesses? Say yes, you are glad. Say yes. You are happy. Say yes. You are inspired. Say yes. You believe that you can do anything God puts in your hand. Yes. Since we have this great cloud of witnesses, Paul is saying we may as well go ahead and push on since they're cheering us on. Since we have this great cloud of witnesses, there's no excuse for us not to keep on doing the right thing because our witnesses no, we can. Yes, we can. Our witnesses are encouraging us. Our witnesses are saying, you can do it. Stay faithful. Stay the course. Don't give in. Resist temptation. You can do the right thing. Our witnesses are saying to us, we know you have the strength within you. Because we know that God is with you. And God is working it out for you. I'm just glad that we got witnesses to remind us that we have so much potential and so much power. Don't throw it away for that one thing. You've got everything you need now. And whatever you don't have, ask God and he'll give it to you. That's our encouragement, that's our inspiration, that's our truth, that's our reality. Do life the faith way. Do life the faith way. And I guarantee you, you'll be happy You'll be peaceful. You'll have joy, unspeakable joy. You'll be able to lay your head down at night knowing you haven't done folks wrong. You'll be able to walk down the street knowing you haven't done folks wrong. Be encouraged. It's not too late to do life the faith way. Let us open the doors of the church. There may be one here today who wants to do life the faith way, wants to give God their hand so they can do the right thing, so they can find great contentment, so that they can look to Jesus for inspiration. We invite you at this time, as we sing an invitational hymn, hymn of 513, time is filled with swift transition. Not of earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. If this is your day, we invite you to come down or put into the comment section online if you want to join the church or if you want prayer for a situation in your life. Today is your day also. Is filled with swift transition. No. to him please 
hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. You are to hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. for the chance to, to give him glory and honor and praise. Right. And we also have a baptism today uh, that we have scheduled for today. And I'm going to ask members who want to follow along, turn to page 801 in your hymnal. We had a rehearsal last Sunday after service to make sure she would come to me with this mask on. So we're going we're gonna to see if it still holds up. All right. All right. And we can get a, we can get a few of our students, if you want to, to come up here if you, if you want to. Just a few. All right, again, if you want to follow along at page 801.
Dearly beloved, for as much as all persons are by nature sinful, and that our Savior Christ said none can enter the kingdom of God except they be regenerated and born anew of water and of the Holy Spirit, I beg of you all to call upon the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ, that of his plentiful mercy he will grant to this child that thing which by nature she cannot have, that she may be baptized with water and the Holy Spirit and receive into Christ's holy church and be made a lively member of the same. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who of your great mercy did save Noah and his family in the ark from perishing by water and also did safely lead the children of Israel, your people, through the Red Sea, figuring thereby holy baptism and the baptism of your well-beloved son, Jesus Christ, in the river Jordan, did sanctify water for this holy sacrament. We beseech you of your infant mercies. You should look upon this child and wash her and sanctify her with the Holy Spirit, that she being received into the ark of Christ's church and being steadfast in faith, joyful through hope, and rooted in love, may so pass the ways of the troublesome world that finally she may come to the land of everlasting life, death to reign with you, world without an end, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty everlasting God, whose most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of our sins, did shed out of his most precious side both water and blood, and gave commandment to his disciples that they should go teach all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Regard, we ask the prayers of this congregation. Sanctify this water for this holy sacrament. Grant that this child may now be baptized, may receive the fullness of your grace, and ever remain in the number of your faithful and elect children. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 All right. <clears throat> Who presents this child for the sacrament of Christian baptism? We do. Do you accept the responsibility to see that she be taught the nature and meaning of this holy sacrament? We do. Will you, by personal example, live before this child a life that becomes the gospel? Will you encourage her to give regular attendance to the appointed means of grace, such as the ministry of the word, the public and private worship of God? We will. In order that she may know these things, will you read and encourage her to read the Holy Scriptures, learn the Lord's Prayer, the Ten Commandments, the Apostles' Creed, the Catechism, and all things that Christians ought to know and believe to her soul's health, in order that she may be brought up to lead a virtuous and holy life, remembering always that baptism does represent us unto us that inward purity which inclines us to follow the example of our Christ our Savior? Will you teach her that Christ died and rose again for us, so, so should we, who are baptized, die unto sin and rise again unto righteousness? Amen. Will you continually encourage the subduing of all corrupt affections and daily endeavor to see that she grow in virtue and godliness? We do. All right. Now, I'm going to ask all those who are present to please stand in our congregation. Hear the words of Christ. I'm sorry, here's the words of the gospel written by St. Mark in the 10th chapter beginning at the 13th verse. And they were bringing children to him and that he might touch them and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, let the children come to me, do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whosoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands upon them. Child. <laughs> Gloria, Mary. 
Members of the household of faith, I commend to your love and care this child, whom we this day recognize as a member of the family of God. Will you endeavor so to live that she may grow in the knowledge and love of God the Father through our Savior Jesus Christ? Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, grant that Jordan, as she grows in years, may also grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that by the restraining and renewing influence of the Holy Spirit, she may ever be a true child of yours, serving you faithfully all the days of her life. So guide and uphold the parents of this child, that by loving, wise counsel and the holy example, they may lead her into that life of faith whose strength is righteousness and whose fruit is everlasting joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us collectively pray as Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 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 All right, Jordan. Great job. All right. Give God praise and thanksgiving. Amen. It is now time for us to bless our offering. For those who are watching online, if you have not had the chance to, you can now go online and uh, pull down from our website the donate or give online section. You can give your offering that way. For those who are here, if you did not have the opportunity when you came in and you missed the basket, you can give it on your way out. That's an opportunity for you to do that. Or when you get home, you can go online also and give in that fashion. Or you can mail it in this week or bring it by the church this week for your offering. Amen? Let us bless our offering. Gracious God, we thank you for the opportunity to bring back to you a portion of what you've blessed us with. We thank you, God, for those who gave and for those who did not but had the desire to do so. Bless us offering, God, that it may be used to continue the mission work of this, your church. It's our prayer in your son, Jesus, the Christ's name. Amen. All right. We have... Uh, let me read this. Uh, we have announcements and then recognition of this. I want to read this card. For the time you give, the hearts you warm, the smiles you make, you appreciate. On behalf of the Covington and Ligon families, uh, we extend our thanks and appreciation during our difficult time of bereavement. Thank you for your condolences, calls, and support. We love you, and Lee Chapel is our refuge. Coming from Kathy Covington. Amen. All right, we have announcements. Let me... I missed an announcement I was supposed to make last week, but let me make the announcement now. 
We want to congratulate uh, the Winrow family. They have a new addition. Uh, let me get uh, Lundy Winrow. Six pounds, five ounces, 19 inches, born July 28th. And so we want to keep in prayer the mother and, and child and the father and the, and the grandparents and the uh, aunt. Amen. Amen. As we celebrate uh, the birth of that child. Amen. Amen. All right. Also announcement. The Guiding Light Club will meet at 2 p.m. after service. Members have received the Zoom information and the agenda. Women's Day participants, you will meet briefly after service in the sanctuary for a quick run through of the program. College ministry, we will meet briefly in the administrative office after service, all right? Let me also thank all those who, who helped in any way uh, with the uh, Love's Healthy Start Festival on yesterday. Whether you prayed for us to be successful, you came out and helped us stack the book bags or pass the book bags out or, or help us in any way, uh, we had a successful event year 10 of the festival, making sure that we get some book bags and school supplies in the kids' hands. And so we're grateful uh, for that opportunity. And we are um, always grateful for a chance to give back to our community, to make sure our kids have at least a start to their school year. Keep them in their prayers. Uh, I see my niece back there, who's the chair of the school board, um, and, and is working on a process and project to help out our Pearl Cone Cluster. And so keep our K-12 students in our prayers. Keep our college students in your prayers as they are matriculating and maneuvering through college, some for the first time, uh, some as they're trying to get out of college, but keep them all in your prayers as they are matriculating, and our administrators and, and our teachers as they're dealing with a wide range of things. Keep them in our prayers. We have a principal here, amen, one of our schools. Keep in your prayers, amen. <laughs> Park Avenue principal. Keep in your prayers. All right, we got teachers. We have, we have teachers in Lee Chapel, amen? We have counselors, right, in Lee Chapel. So let us surround them. Let us uh, keep them in our prayers. But more than that, let's also engage in being a support uh, for them if they need us for after school tutorial or other issues since we have our learning center back, all right? And let us keep that on the forefront of our minds, all right? Uh, I see my, my nephews have showed up. I guess they want to race outside. I don't know. Maybe they want to, they heard me. Maybe they want, all want to, want to get, see if we, can, if we can run and maybe win, Brother Woodson, maybe. No, no, I, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll let them win. All right, I'll let them win this time. All right. All right, but good to see them here this morning. I think those are all the announcements. Oh, uh, we want to make sure that we, again, we have our Wednesday night Bible study will be at 6.30 this Wednesday. Prayer call on Tuesday and on, on Thursday. We have birthdays to celebrate this week. <laughs> birthdays. Christian Bugs, August the 15th. <laughs> Amen. Jarvany Guest, August the 16th. Amen. Kathy Nelson, August the 16th. Yvonne Lee. August the 17th. John Keyes, August the 18th. <laughs> Reverend Cedric Bailey, Sr., August the 18th. Mary Strickland, August the 19th. <laughs> Tracy Bradford, August the 20th. <laughs> Amen. What was going on in August? Amen. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear members. Happy birthday to you. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. Amen. And we have wedding anniversaries. Nathaniel and Annie Price, August the 17th. Amen. Residing out of Troy and Brenda Merritt, August the 17th as well. Amen. Let us sing to them. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, dear members. Happy anniversary to you. Amen. 
I think those are all of our announcements that we have. Are there other announcements that we need to be made aware of? Okay. All right. Again, we praise God for the chance to come into God's house this day and to worship him. Amen? Amen. And we'll be in prayer this week for our Women's Day. Amen? Amen. Be in prayer for a successful Women's Day next Sunday. All right? Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. <laughs> As we prepare to conclude worship at Lee Chapel today, let us remember that we can do life the faith way. We can do life the faith way if we remove the weight that can easily hinder us from running our race the best. If we understand that we can exceed the expectations that even we have if we learn to be content, amen, with what God has given us. And we can look at Jesus for an example and find the joy in doing the right thing. Paul lays it out for us. The blueprint is there for us to do faith, do life the faith way. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit may they rest, may they rule, and may they abide with us both now and forever. And all the people of God sang... week. For those on the first level, please, if you will take your seats, we're going to dismiss from the balcony first and then from the first floor very shortly. Mm -hmm.